a dramatic start to the day on Wall Street, with trading halted shortly after the open, stocks dropping sharply in the aftermath of the crash in oil prices. Now, the Dow Jones plunging by more than 1,800 points, while the S&P 500 tanked by some 7.25% in trade today. Now, trading was halted for 15 minutes. It's since restarted, and it is also a similar story in the European markets as well. They're not doing much better. London is down nearly 8%. The DAX also dropping by some 8%. Asian financial markets were also a sea of red today. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index shed more than 4.2% in trade today. The Shanghai Composite, meantime, dropping some 3%. Over in Japan, the benchmark Nikkei fell by 5%, marking the biggest one-day fall that we've seen since mid-2016. The broader topics, meantime, slid over 5.5%. Now, looking at oil prices, U.S. crude oil futures were down about 22% to about $32 a barrel, recovering from an earlier drop to around $27 or a third of its value. Now, that is the biggest decline since the first Gulf War in 1991, it cut, and it comes after the world's top exporter, Saudi Arabia, slashed its prices. Well, Saudi has also threatened to release additional oil supplies on already strained markets. And the move would be designed to punish Russia for its refuse because it has refused to cut its production. OPEC and its allies met last week to discuss how to respond to falling demand caused by the coronavirus outbreak, but they failed to agree on measures to slash output. Now, the collapse of the talks has now triggered fears of an all-out price war. Here in Singapore, the STI closed sharply in the red today, down by 6%. It was the biggest one-day loss in more than a decade, and it took the index to its lowest level that we have seen in nearly four years. Now, here's how the STI has been doing since the start of the year. It's been trending downwards anyway, but it's now down by 13.6% since the beginning of January. The biggest drag on the STI today, oil, and marine players, Semcorp and Keppel Corp, both down by more than 9%. Now, Semcorp Marine plunging 11.4% of its share value. Shares of Singapore Airlines, meantime, also taking a hit, with further uncertainty caused by the falling out between Saudi Arabia and Russia over oil supply. Now, the counter is down by 4.5% to its lowest in 17 years. Now, for banks, DBS led the way south for the banks down by 8%. That's its lowest in more than two years. And for more, we're joined by Vasu Menon, Executive Director for Investment Strategy at OCBC Bank. Now, Vasu, first off, trading has been halted on Wall Street after a 7% decline triggered a so-called circuit breaker. Did you expect to see that today? Not at all. I mean, what's happened in the last 24 hours has been uh, quite alarming, quite shocking. You know, it's rattled nerves, it's shocked the markets, created a bit of panic selling, margin calls, uh, probably rebalancing of portfolio among global fund managers, liquidation, you name it, Don. I mean, uh, I've not seen this sort of action in quite a while, and I've spent 32 years tracking the market. So it's not often that you see something uh, like what's happened today happening in the markets. It's nothing short of, of a contagion effect that we're seeing, isn't it, Vasu? But explain for us a little bit about this dramatic day that we've seen globally. Is it possibly the worst that we've seen since the financial crisis? Well, you know, um, if you look at oil prices, the decline in oil prices was the sharpest decline since 1991, as you highlighted earlier. Uh, that very sharp decline, I think, uh, caused a bit of panic. Uh, as I said earlier, margin calls, no rebalancing, liquidation. Uh, you know, this may not be the worst. I mean, you, you could actually see uh, possibly prices uh, heading further south. I mean, uh, the bias is more towards the downside. The markets have been hit by two, uh, you know, events. One is COVID-19, which, which has been playing out since the beginning of the year. And of course, the plunge in oil prices now. So it's spooked investors. It's rattled nerves. Uh, and, you know, over the weekend, you've had uh, Italy's, uh, you know, infection cases increasing significantly. The government in Italy, you know, locking down 16 million people. You've had New York declaring an emergency. Uh, the numbers in the U.S. picking up. So, you know, lots of headline news out there to scare investors, uh, you know, and that has resulted in the momentum of selling picking up. 
And uh, yeah, it's, it's something we've not seen in a long time. Mm. But Vasu, was the biggest trigger this price war, this oil price war that we've seen? We're looking at the possibility here of seeing oil at $20 a barrel. Uh, without a doubt, I mean, oil did play a very important part uh, in terms of, you know, uh, today's sell-off. If you cast your mind back to the last 10 years, the lowest that oil prices have been has been around $26 a barrel. Uh, WTI is now about 33 Brand is, I believe, about $35 a barrel. So we're not far away from that $26 uh, dollar per barrel handle. So it's possible that oil prices could, could head further south. It all depends on what comes out of Saudi Arabia, the rhetoric over there, whether they're serious about increasing supply in a big way. They have the ability to increase, increase supply quite significantly. They're only producing 9.5 million barrels a day. They can produce up to 12.5 million barrels a day. Uh, now, if they take it up to the devil, then, you know, prices could really plunge. So, you know, this is a game of brinksmanship, uh, Saudi Arabia against Russia. So it all depends on what uh, plays out in the next few days, whether uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that will affect how oil prices uh, move. It will clearly have an impact on the global markets as well. Yes, you mentioned the next few days and we were only at Monday and, and we've seen this. Any silver linings at all? Because, I mean, it looks like a race to the bottom here, uh, you know, and, and we've just done with one day of this, of this uh, trading week. Uh, any silver linings at all in the short term? Well, you know, Don, in the short term, we could see a technical rebound. The moves have been very sharp, very exaggerated. Uh, you know, and so there could be a technical rebound, but it may not last. That's a problem. Uh, of course, the silver lining is also that oil prices being as low as they are right now could actually prove beneficial for the global economy in the long term. It could help industrial activity by bringing cost of production down, could put more money in the pockets of consumers, uh, especially for oil related activities. You know, so it can be a positive. Then, of course, the other silver linings you can think about, uh, you know, policy stimulus. You've seen some of that happen. Uh, monetary policy, fiscal policy, all that adds up. But eventually, Yvonne, I think what really matters are the global infection numbers. Mm -hmm. That has to peak and show signs of peaking and coming down before we can see sentiment really pick up and the markets pick up. Until then, I think the markets are going to be very choppy. Yeah, and as far as those numbers peaking globally, at least, I mean, it doesn't look as if we're going to see that anytime soon. And, and in the absence of, of more positive news, uh, you know, a sustainable turnaround, not possible. What should investors really be doing in, in this situation? I think investors ought to tread very carefully. Uh, you know, I think this is not the time to be buying aggressively in the markets. Uh, for those who feel that, you know, they want to bargain hunt, I would suggest be very careful, uh, buy very gradually, buy modestly. Uh, you know, the markets are going to be volatile. There could be other opportunities down the road. Nobody can really call the bottom, right? So I think it's very important to diversify over time. I think it's very important to also, if you have, you know, investments, it's time to perhaps rebalance, you know, ensure that your portfolio is very diversified. Uh, have some goal in your portfolio because, you know, goal has done very well. And in this sort of uncertainty, goal could continue to do uh, even better. But I think the key message is markets are going to be volatile. Don't be too aggressive in, in, in you know, uh, buying on dips at this juncture. Uh, but if you have to buy, buy modestly and uh, buy gradually over time. In other words, time, diver time diversify your investments. That is good advice for investors. Vasu, thank you very much. Uh, for talking to me this evening. We've been speaking there to Vasu Menon, Executive Director for Investment Strategy at OCBC Bank.